is the City of Flint's City Council Meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions, determined to make a difference. And underwritten in part by Local 370 Flint, Michigan, United Association of Union of Plumbers, Pipefitters, Welders, and Service Techs. Pipefitters Union has entry level conveyors available and they're available at 810-720-5243. Television broadcast sponsored by the City of Flint, City Council Meeting. Up next. Offices wouldn't be discussing that. the actual case, so we wouldn't be entering into the executive session. But I mean, I think that's really up to, us. Up to you okay. on, the, on the vote, you know. Okay, well, then if we decide in executive session, then we'll ask uh, those parties that aren't uh, attuned mm -hmm. to what's going on with the councils. Uh, to leave the room. So, is that fair? That would be fair. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I think but the only thing is, uh, when this has happened in the past, and I can, I can only recall maybe one other time when it's happened, the council's attorney would also have to be in the, in the room with them. So, if there's legal advice and so forth, and since your attorney is not here, I think it begs the question as to whether or not you can do it. Well, uh, I, I mean, we'll, we'll discuss that um, when, when we're done. Um, Roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays, point of information. Oh, Monica. Is there a substitute motion on the floor? Okay, because he said that would be my substitute motion. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to clarify what was said. And is, is that what's on the floor now? Because if it is, 
is does it need to be seconded? I, I looked at it as a, a request to go into executives to add his um, issue to the executive session. I'm just saying yeah, what he said I, verbally. I yeah. just want to make sure. No, okay. I, I understand. I think okay. I, 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 go ahead. I, I thought it was part of the discussion. What, what he, uh, Councilman May was talking about, well, he was talking about procedure. Right. And then as he's talking about procedure, he's saying that as a, before the vote, there's discussion. And that's what he had. But, right. he's here. but can so I just say his words said that would be my substitute motion. I just want to make sure that that's not what he meant. I missed that. Yes. So I, I guess I didn't hear a second for your motion, Eric, but I let you clarify it. I, yeah. I, uh, Either way, um, I think it's going to be the same effect. If I, let's say I withdraw the substitute motion and I add it in as a item that we would additionally go into executive session on and give us the opportunity as a council to be updated by some of our colleagues, which we know the attorneys ain't here. That would be a brief explanation, and we all know what's going on. And um, I believe that we are in line doing that if we decide to do that. So, Mr. Chairman, I can go along with what has been said here, and I'm, I'm ready to vote. Okay. Roll, Madam Clerk. And I want to make sure that the public understands what we're voting upon. Right. Now, can someone explain that, what we're voting on? Yeah, we're the original vote. motion? We're, we're, no, we're voting on, an, on going into executive sessions on the cases that Ms. Wheeler identified, and they're on our agenda. And we're adding uh, from uh, Councilman Mays uh, the opportunity while we're in executive session, if there's information that needs to be shared, that that opportunity will be made available mm -hmm. uh, if there's information to share with the rest of the council people while we're in executive session. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to deter from whatever Mr. Mays is attempting to do, mm -hmm. but I also think that uh, normally when you go into executive session, it is published in the, on the uh, agenda. The same as the other three in terms of the public's right to know in advance that you're going into executive session. I understand. So I just wanted to put the additional negative on the table okay. in terms of the legality that you may not be doing. Mr. Chairman, if I may, we could be in any committee and or regular council meeting and some could come up. I've researched it. The attorney have spoke on it, and I think we've covered this. I don't want to put nothing negative out there because that's what we can do at any time in any council meeting, and there's nothing negative about it. It's just the law. Thank you. Okay, roll, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mays? Yes. Ms. Coppola? Yes. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Winfrey? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Ms. Van Buren? Yes. Mr. Kincaid? Yes. The vote is nine yes, zero no to go into executive session. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the City of Flint's City Council meeting. Um, all I hear is when. And one prime example is Mr. Taylor over on Bent Street every day. And he thinks that the city is actually lying to him because these trees are not coming down. My constituents that call me, they don't give a hoop nor a holler about who's going to take it down. They want it down like yesterday, like Last year, I get these calls every day. Miss Popper, you keep saying they're coming down. When are they coming down? All they want, you know, obviously, the other side of town, they want to babysit their trees or do whatever. I don't have anybody that call me yet that want to babysit a tree. They want the trees down. I want a contract in place. You don't have to knock on people's doors in the second ward about a doggone tree. Just take the tree down. If the tree is no good, take the doggone tree down. That's all the people want. That's the calls I get every day. 
I do not get a call telling me that they took the wrong tree down. I've been here since 2005 and I ain't got a call yet saying that someone took the wrong tree down. That they argued. They're arguing because these trees are not coming down. And the only way they're coming down, they're doggone falling down. So that's the way it is. I don't know about anybody else's war. I'm just letting you know what I get every day. And I'm letting you know what I've been getting since 2005. It's the same old story. Take the tree down. We want the trees down. We want the trees trimmed. We want the down. We want to trim. That's it. Plain and simple. With me, I don't know. The rest of y'all babysit sit the trees. But we need to do something. We need to do it now. I'm Miss Fields. And then there. I just want to say that, you know, all over the city, you know, different people are concerned with different things and they prioritize different things. And I can well understand uh, Jackie's need to make her constituents happy and get what they need. And uh, Mr. Nelson's expressed the same concern. But I think we, as council people, have to look at the bigger picture here. And one of the things I'm really concerned with, now I like the idea of the compromise um, where we could, um, you know, the homeowner would actually have to uh, sign off on the tree taken down. That way you ensure that if they don't want the tree taken down, they don't have to. The compromise is if they want it taken down, well then they can sign for it, it's taken down. But the bigger picture here is, and I want you to think about this in terms of lead pipes, okay? This tree agreement was put into place under an EFM. And I have yet to hear this council support continuing <coughs> a process project put in place by an EFM. Council has always said, no, you know, we need to get back to where, uh, per our charter, where, where council makes the decisions that are necessary. So I would think that council, just like in the pipe replacement, we knew this work had to be done, not every house. You know, some people wanted it done, some people didn't, okay? But at the heart of the thing, what was important was we had to do public bids because we're using public dollars. So the fact that this resolution does not allow for a public bid is not good. And, you know, council people need to, I mean, I want everybody to be satisfied, okay? And it's unusual in that we can find compromise situations that could make that happen. Sometimes we can. But this can happen. So I hope in special affairs, and we'll speak more to it if we need to, we don't need to take the entire budget for trees and put it for emergency cutting because there's no way within the next couple months we're going to be able to spend 300000 on cutting down trees. But we need to look at the bigger picture, and while we set aside some money for that, with the homeowner's permission, we need to be doing a public bid. We need to do a public bid for transparency for all public tax dollars. And I really don't know how any council person can argue against doing a public bid because it flies in the face of what we're supposed to be doing, which is <coughs> oversight of public tax dollars. Okay, that Councilman Mays next, and then Councilman Nelson. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, and to the public, you know, I just listen to council people politicking and using words about it happens. Like Ms. Fields, it happened under the emergency manager. How can people go against a public bid? People was ready to give an extension of a contract to Republic without a public bid. I've seen council people want to do stuff without a public bid. <clears throat> Emergency manager committees of three were set up. I went to jail because I wasn't a member of the three. Ms. Fields, you just did rules as a committee of three. Very hypocritical. But that's okay because it sounds good. My position is this. Ms. Poplar, the first ward residents, they echoing what you're saying. They want trees trimmed and mostly cut down. They get upset when it's trimmed and not cut down. 
but the conservation district say it's still alive. We ain't cutting it down. It's trim. I hate they put trees <coughs> in the right. Way. You know why I hate it? Because they lift up the sidewalk. And so I got so many sidewalks looking like bike ramps where you can ride through them and just shoot up in the sky. Amen. And so I'm very let down that the plant going to close, Betty. And the worst one on Bell Tree or Bell Creek, whichever street that is that hooks Park, Bell, and all them, I'm embarrassed because it was a top priority sidewalk. You can see up under it. And it's like I could ride a bike and just shoot up in there. Really? And then the other one on Barbara Drive had a barrel sitting out there for almost months. And I'm embarrassed because I know them sidewalks that trees and rooted them up ain't going to be dealt with. And then, Miss Brown, guess what? They're going to say that guy couldn't get that sidewalk fixed. And they might vote for it. It's embarrassing. That's the politics of being a council person hollering about sidewalks in the first ward that the tree trunks that I wish were never planted there. But they there. And so now we got trees and we got sidewalks. But I do respect the <laughs> seventh ward because I rode around in the car with Miss. The key. And I believe people like to conserve trees and look at trees differently. These people look at me differently. So I know they look at a tree differently. My point is this. I asked, and I think you asked, and it would be wrong, Mr. Chairman, if I continue to talk and don't ask you, could I hear their point of view? Because they here was put on the agenda for me. I think I know what the point of view is. And my position is this. I'm ready to approve this resolution and move it to council. But I would first ask through you, Mr. Chairman, to bet. And if you tell me your last name, I say Weidman. Weidman. Ms. Weidman, what is the total contract annually we spend on tree trimming and removal because stumps and replanting trees is a part of this equation but stumps don't always get removed and replanting I ain't seen but I ain't for replanting because it tapped them sidewalk but what's the annual budget this year it was three hundred and forty thousand dollars 40000 of that we did an emergency contract with Great Lakes Tree Trimming and j &M because we didn't have anything in place with Genesee Conservation District and trees are still falling. And so when we got three hundred and thirty uh, 340000 annually, do you have an estimate about how many trees is trimmed and or removed? Do you have a ballpark estimate? Paid? I don't have it with me, but we do have a number. That includes tree trimming, tree removal, um, the inspection of the tree, uh, the the forty thousand of that goes towards um, administrative costs for the year for the office for the inspections that they do, um, and then keeping track of the data and sending us a weekly report. They send us a report every week. And I ain't gonna trip on whatever the figure is. So if we get it, that's fine. But Miss Fields do have a point. You know, I don't disagree with folks to agree. Ain't nothing wrong with bidding stuff out. Ain't nothing wrong with bidding stuff out. That's how, in my opinion, some of my colleagues won't admit it and they call me wrong. That's how we save some money with the garbage tank. So I ain't got no problem bidding it out, but not this year. I'm not going to vote to hold this up. You know, I'm a politician. I'm like Miss Poplar. We got trees need trimming and sidewalks fixed. This ain't the time. September, October, need some work done. So I'm going to approve it. And then, if y'all don't want to use it and it ain't right, come to the first war and we can get some stuff done. But I'm sensitive to y'all, and then I'm quiet, Mr. Chairman, and I show sure pray and hope you let it chime in. Well, but this is my position. If the seventh ward wanted bid it, 
I want it big. If the seventh ward wanted um with forms where they can be notified, you got two ways a tree come down. On our initiative and on a residence initiative. And so if the seventh ward in that block, because y'all got a heck of a block club, I'm going to pay attention to you. Don't y'all meet at the Mock Technology Center? And you're supposed to pay attention to the people. So this council got to be smart <coughs> enough to carve out a niche as it relates to this group of folk. Some of them trees they got is historic big trees. They ain't like the trees in the first ward, Miss Brown. They got some trees. And so I never knew a tree. I ain't never named a tree. But I'm here to tell you, I can pay attention. And I think this council should be creative enough to satisfy everybody. Mr. Chairman, without me going on and on, I said what I had to say. I think I covered everything. I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, Councilman Nelson, then Ms. Galloway, then Ms. Fields, and if Ms. Galloway wants one of her constituents that um, is in charge of the Black Club to speak, um, that I'll honor your request. Ms. Thank Nelson. you, Mr. Chair. If I could, Mr. Chair, have Ms. Willis speak for just a few minutes <coughs> on the issue yep. of how. Um, data processing and keeping up all that paperwork. Yeah, yeah, I think um, one of the concerns that we would have for, and like I said, I don't want to speak for Ms. Weidman, would be how we would keep all this information inside as far as manpower, employees, um, tracking, and in addition, like I said, going out and, and actually passing out the waivers, you know, house by house. And as you're very familiar with, you've already discussed, was the less service line replacement, that's a major feat within itself with that program that's this you know dedicated to that cause and making sure that folks have um, the lead service lines replaced. So I, I think that Betty probably could speak more to it, but I, I know that that is an issue as far as making sure that we do it because if we do it, we have to do it right and um, we need to make sure we have the, the manpower. Thank you. Ms. Betty, would you, if it's all right, yeah, no, um, I guess we need to back up a little bit. When Kay Muhammad was in this position, um, Parks and Forestry had just disbanded, mm -hmm. so we no longer have Parks and Forestry. The street maintenance, transportation, assume the responsibility. And assuming the responsibility, we found the MOU that said that Genesee Conservation District had partnered with Parks and Rec to take care of street trees. All we did was expand on that MOU. We do not have the staffing to track the bid, keep track of the employees, hand out anything to a door. We just do not have the staff. We did not absorb Parks and Rec staff. We did not absorb their money. Our funding comes from Act 51, which is gas and weight tax. We are allowed to put money aside for tree removal because it is in the parkway. That's the only reason. The only reason we may remove a tree or touch a tree that's beyond the sidewalk is because it's hanging over the sidewalk and creating a hazard. Point of information. Don't we have volunteers in other parts of the city and maybe that group might volunteer? Go ahead, Go ahead. I'm for residents saying yes or no. But we still have to look at whether it's a hazard or not. It can't just be, I like the way this tree looks, I want the tree to stay, but the tree is dying on the inside. We have to make sure that we make a conscious effort. It is our property at the end of the day. Anything between that sidewalk and that street belongs to the city. It is our asset. We have to protect our asset. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to let those two individuals talk. I am trying to be very fair as I can in understanding Councilwoman Galloway's uh, situation, uh, trying to make sure that everybody uh, is taken care of. But I, I can get it back on Councilwoman Poplar and May's statement. No one yet has called me to say plant any trees. They said take them down. 
I cannot keep on going to black club meetings saying it will come soon. Give us time. Because then you put doubt in their mind if you're telling the truth at all. Is this going to take place? Where I am today, and if Councilwoman Galloway has said that a, 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 a counter offer was offered by Jesse Cultivation to do make a call or knock on a door in the culture center area um, to do that extra step. Um, well, then if that agreement was made and, it, and, and, and you guys are all right with that, if you can do it, I'm fine. But I'm, I'm just still trying to say that on Monday, and I will move this gladly and I won't withdraw anything, but on Monday, I am ready to move this to council with a permission slip or not. If we cannot come to grips with that, if the department cannot handle that kind of, for this whole city, uh, doing permission slips, if they want to do it just for a certain area, and that's all right with that council person and Miss Betty, then I'm fine with that. But on Monday, if I'm here and the Lord doesn't take me away, I am going to move this resolution to council. And, 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 and I hope and I, and I pray that everyone understands, and I think Councilwoman Poplar, Councilwoman Maeve, all have said we're trying to be understanding for everybody, but we have a people to answer to. And, and so by that, those are those who elected me, and they're looking for leadership from me, and I must do so. And I'm on Monday, I'm going to do that, Mr. Chair, whether we come up with a plan B or not. Thank you. I got um, Ms. Galloway and then Ms. Fields and then we're going to wrap up and move on. I just, I, after I allow, if, if you'd like for them to address. Okay. I just want to say for the record that this is not about politics for me. I know we're in an election year, but we just need to do what is right. And I just want to say as an example, I was on vacation in May and I keep notes of people, especially with trees, and I got a call from a resident on April saying, Councilwoman Galloway, somebody's planting trees that we don't want. We don't know why they're planting trees. Another person saying, hey, Councilwoman Galloway, I got this dead tree. Oh, call me back. Oh, I just got a door hanger. And so what I'm trying to say is, in my ward, there appears to be some inconsistency. So, and, and, and I'm saying that because here you got some saying they're getting trees that are planted. You got some that are saying, hey, I got a door hanger, this tree is coming down. There are some things that I have concerns about. But when we meet about this at the special affairs meeting on Monday, Scott, you've been here 32 years. What did we spend on trees before this memorandum of understanding? How many staff does it take? And I've shared with some of the college cultural area. I understand your concern. But you have a financially strapped city. The staff is working so hard. I mean, I, can't, I can probably show you 15 emails that I sent Betty, who works on streets. She's working on repairing the um, asphalt because of the pipeline. And so here we got this, this concern that is active, that is a valid concern, but you want to squeeze blood from turnips of employees that are working around the clock because um, K. Mohammed is not here. So they're taking on another responsibility. So what we're saying is, I know you're working around the clock, and Miss Betty can tell you, you can text Betty at 9, 10 o'clock at night. You can text Bob, Bob, Rob Benzik at midnight, and he's probably working somewhere. So all I'm saying is there needs to be some empathy. We need to be looking at what, are, what was the cost. Do we have the manpower to do it? Because if we do, that's okay. If the legal department, because I've been asking about this, Angela, because they are saying, I'm willing to take financial responsibility. Because I don't want this to come up every year. It's not going away. So if they, the ones that want to take liability and responsibility for the trees that they cherish and that they want to take responsibility because it makes their area look beautiful, we should be willing as a city because it seems like it would be financially advantageous to us. 
If you got 800 residents over in the college cultural area saying, hey, I love this tree. And so whatever needs to be done with this tree, I'm willing to sign a waiver to say that the city doesn't ever have to do anything with this tree ever again. Why wouldn't we be looking to explore that? Because if we did that, we wouldn't be having this conversation. And those that want to do, because it would actually help the city financially. Second with that, the trees that are being planted. Nobody is watching what trees are and are not being planted. I don't want to play games. Plant a tree. I just don't think that Raul Garcia is going to go out there and say, how dare you put that tree there. He has blight that you wouldn't even, he wouldn't even know. We wouldn't even know that a tree has been planted there unless somebody said it. And am I trying to tell somebody to do something illegally? No, but I'm saying, come on now. If I plant a tree, you probably wouldn't even notice until it was 11 or 12 years old, and you say, man, I never noticed that tree. All I'm saying is, the residents can help to be creative as well. There is grants, there are financial resources in the college culture area that probably is not available. And I'm not trying to be facetious or anything, but what I'm saying is, we can get things done, but we're trying to put a weight on this city that we cannot carry. And so with that, I'm just saying, Scott, I, we've been talking about this from April, and I don't want my colleagues coming in now that it's election time, and then all of a sudden, these people have been coming, and I don't mean these people in a negative, derogative way, but they've been coming to meetings since April, since March, before the council, before the committee meeting. This is not new, and so I don't want all of a sudden we're going to pick it up because it's election time. This We've been asking for a resolution on this before now. And I'm not saying um, to the ones whose wards you guys could care less, but what I'm saying is, Ms. Betty, we, if, if we probably racked up hours, we probably spent like 20 hours in meetings about this scenario. And so with that, I appreciate it. Um, if Mike would like to... I'm going to wait till we get all done. Oh, no. Okay. I, you, you asked me, so yeah, yeah, whenever you want it done, sure. that's fine with me. But, but I just want to say I would like to see details, Scott. You've been the financial chair. Right. What was it before? Do we have the manpower? What did it look like? How many people? If we bid it out, what would that bid look like, and how long would it take? So, well, thank I, I, just, just for clarification okay. to Ms. Betty and Monica, because you, you brought up some points that I may, may not be aware of. Um, when when we do a contract um, in this MOU with the conservation district, do we use city employees as a resource to evaluate the trees and knock on the doors and talk to people, or does the conservation district? The conservation district does it all. They manage the program. That, that, they actually manage it. That, that's programs. right. So the only thing we do is if we get a call when they're closed or whatever, uh -huh. we may send somebody yeah. out there to take a look and see what the tree is about, but we don't make a determination on the tree. So, so once we approve funding for the conservation district, if we had a permission slip before the tree was cut down, it would be the responsibility of the conservation district to get it. Yes. Would not be a resource to the, to the street department. Um, point of information. You're talking about the memorandum of understanding. I'm talking about if we bid it out. Amen. Well, no. So what, that's well, what I'm trying to. I don't know the difference. Well, well, I'm trying I, to I don't know what the difference is. And I don't want to get into a, right? into a debate, right. Monica. But no, I don't uh -huh. know if if is it the responsibility then um, for us to just give taxpayers dollars to an entity and let them decide how much they pay a company? Scott, you don't think that I'm asking that, really. Are You are you don't really think that that's what I'm saying, are you? No, I don't I, know I if think, you're being facetious or no, not. No, I'm not. I, I okay. think what you're asking is, should the city council or should the city bid this out? No, I'm asking what was the difference. You've been here longer than me. What was it when the city was bidding it out? Well, well when the city did it, we did it ourselves. We well, had our tree. We had our So, just tree. for the record, just for the record, Scott, I'm not saying that we're wasting taxpayers' dollars. I'm asking you the difference as the most tenured mm -hmm. council person on this council. So please don't misinterpret what I'm saying, because that's not what I'm saying. No, I'm, I don't want to waste any taxpayer dollars. I, I didn't mean that that okay. way, what I, what I was trying to get to was we're giving money out of the 202 and 203 and Act 51 fund to have trees cut down. Those are dollars that come to the city. 
we now give these dollars to the conservation district? And I don't know if this is true or not, because I, I really I've not been involved in this. I come to one meeting, but did the conservation district put a bid out for companies to cut the trees down? I don't know. Yes. Did they? No, so no they did not. not. They did not. They did a request for qualifications. They did not bid it out. So, so, you know, Monica, I can't, I can't answer your question because it's not our. This is a question for Betty too. I, I asked you know how many trees. Yep. I can only, yeah. I can only respond from what I know from when we started, just a little bit, because I wasn't totally involved. Because back then, when we started, we did not have Act 51 funds to use. So that was where our problem started. This should be done with parks and rec money, not with street funds right. in the first place. Right. Okay? Absolutely. So when we entered into this MOU, Genesee Conservation District has matching funds or has some funds available from a private donor that match to what we have to take down trees. Because this anonymous donor loves trees, loves the you know vegetation, wants it out there, but at the same time realizes that we were so far behind and our maintain, maintenance of the tree, of taking down the trees, that we needed to start somewhere. And that's what we did. When we started two years ago, we started with the critical removals, trying to get the ones down that were going to fall. In the middle of that, we started having trees just fall because, okay? When this first, when this first started, they did the, the, the inspection. Now here we are two years later, that inspection has changed. You know, we're not looking at all of this. We're only looking at pieces of the puzzle. I understand that you want it to be bid out. I have the, I understand that. We don't have the staff to manage that portion. That's why we gave it to Genesee Conservation District, so they could manage the tree contractors, so they could take care of what needs to be done out there for us. They sent us a list of showing which ones that they sent notice to proceed on to the contractor so we see it before it goes. I mean, these are based on residents, they're based on city council members, they're based on emergencies that fall when we get a phone call that says it failed. So it's not just one area, it's all of the city. So we're trying to do the thing that we can do the best with the least amount of staff that we have. Okay. Let's, let's keep moving on so you can get done with that. Yeah, go ahead. And, and, that's, what, and then I'm have, coming to you. And that's what's happening when we come out of emergency managers and people who just change policy. You know it, Ms. Brown. So each subject, it takes time for us to catch on and for you to catch on. So I said I'd be quick. Even though that y'all been coming for a while, this is one of the first deep It triggers the requirement of a public bid. So one thing we need to look at is what does that ordinance say about money, monetary thresholds <coughs> and public bids. Because if we're not following that, then we are violating our own law or our own ordinances. And the other thing I would like to say is that one of the things that's not been discussed fully, but has been discussed at length by the people who have been especially interested in this issue, is putting together a citizen oversight committee that is very much like the committee we use for determining our block grant dollars with suggestions for how it should be used. This group actually consists of people that have, I think there's somebody with a PhD in something similar <coughs> that's part of the group, that, you know, people with real expertise that they can be learned to um, perhaps contribute <coughs> to the specs for a bid for trees. And it's not just taking the tree down, maintaining it, it's tree replacement. The city of Flint doesn't even have a policy I mean, so what, I can go put Christmas trees on the parkways? Well, you know, and that may be great, but I mean, the fact is we have this huge absence of any kind of policy about tree replacement, leaving the stumps. I mean, there's so many things that should be in this bitter solicitation that we've just not had before. And the last thing I want to say is, I'm, although I'm sure there are a lot of well-intentioned people on the conservation district, 
Okay, when I first got involved in this and got to know that organization, this organization doesn't even understand the difference between a request for qualifications and a public bid. So the city can't just hand over its legal responsibility for public bids for tax dollars to some group that doesn't even have an understanding of what that means. So it's really critical, it's vital, that we get a bid and a policy. This citizens group, I think, can help. I think they could help take a lot of it off Betty's shoulders, too, because I know she, you know, she's doing six jobs, okay, and, and shouldn't have to be doing all that. But there is no one way to do it. And I think pushing this through, what it reminds me of very much is the state saying, here's what you're going to do, and that's it. And I don't agree with that. I think there are many opportunities and levels and compromises. And I think we need to pursue those and follow our own law. So my referral is to, uh, for legal, to have prior to Monday, I'd like to know what our purchasing ordinance says about purchasing and thresholds. I recognize that referral in order, Jackie, and then Monica, you can make your referral and then we're going to vote after Mr. Keeler, or if that's who you want to speak to me. Jackie. Mr. Taylor, I am sitting in my committee meeting. We have a resolution, and it's for a tree contract, but it's going to be probably postponed until Monday's special affairs. So that's going to kind of hold your trees up on Bent Street. Do you have anything you would like to say to my colleagues that you say to me every day and to Miss Betty? Miss Betty's sitting here too. Well, Miss Betty knows what I scared of was uh, the trees need to be taken down because they rotten and their limbs are falling off them. And as they fall on this house, uh, and the neighbor's house, the city gonna be sued. There's no reason for them not to do that. They need to let somebody get out of the ride and cut them down in the paint for So that's what we need. We need to tree it down. Because when the winter comes, they're going to stop up the sewage and all that stuff. Then we got to call the plumb out. Then we got to pay you guys. This don't make sense. And this sidewalk out here is all cut up here and they're falling over. All over, all summer long. They can ride their little bikes and they get to their home. They've been flipping. Okay, Mr. Taylor. I just wanted you to please let people know what you tell me every morning before I have my coffee. Okay? So, Miss Betty is here, and she knows because you talk to her every day. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. I just want you to know I'm fighting for your trees on Bent Street, okay? That's right, I appreciate it. Okay, we'll be talking, Mr. Taylor. Thank, thank you. Point of yeah, Wouldn't it be a fair statement that the resident can sign a waiver, but they can't sign a waiver for people going down the street or for branch or tree falling away from them? Just the point. Monica, you better refer. Yes. Um, according to the memorandum of understanding, there is great accountability on here. I don't know that that's being met. And so um, I would like to find out how the conservation district, maybe if they could be here on Monday, to talk about how they've been allocating the funds, how they determined what needed to be spent. Because I don't think that, me personally, I've never asked them, um, but I didn't know how detailed this was. And so that's what. So I'm making a referral to ask the conservation district to be here on Monday. Well, not just to be here, to tell how they've been allocating the tree yes, money. Right and how they chose their contract. Point of information. Let me make that referral, Larry. You got that yep. referral? Okay. Could I get a copy of that memorandum between now and Monday? Yeah, we can provide one. And can Derek be here, too? Derek Jones? Yeah. We'll ask. He ain't ready for this. But I would like a copy of that memorandum to read over the weekend. What can you get a copy? Okay.
between now and Monday, whether we put an ad hoc committee together or we get permission slips. My, my idea is we get permission slips where somebody just says, you know, Scott Kincaid says it's okay to remove that tree in the parkway in front of my house. Um, I sign that. I, I get a little offended when people in the conservation district are going out in our neighborhoods and telling people, well, your tree needs to come down, but the city doesn't have any money because your council person hasn't provided the funding. Happened in my ward on Tennyson. So I know that for a fact. So, I mean, we got to find a balance. We, we know everybody agrees that the trees have to come down. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm going to look at making sure that there's funding in place. I'm the finance chairman. I'm going to do that. I'm going to get with you guys. I'm going to take in. Uh, but, but, I, but I see two things that have to happen in the resolution. One, we have to provide some funding in, in the interim of whatever we come up with. And two, we have to have the conservation district provide a permission slip or a notification that's signed by the property owner that the tree is going to either be trimmed uh, or removed. And they just have to sign that. That way when you come home from work and or vacation that your maple tree in your front yard between the sidewalk and the curb is still there or it's been gone. Point of information, <coughs> Mr. Chair. I'd just like to point out that we have two tree programs currently. We have the Knoll City Street Tree Inventory and we have the Emergency Citizen Request, which deals with, you know, a branch that's come down or maybe lightning the trees half over. So you can provide money to take care of all of those emergency or dead tree situations without going forward with the big tree program citywide, the Knowles program, until you do a bit. I want to make it clear um, through you to Mr. Keeler, what month about did we ride through there and just show you? And from what he said in <laughs> April or May is no different from what he said today. He's saying the same thing Council person popular, Nelson and I are saying. They ain't arguing about dead trees and rotten rent limbs and nothing. I don't want to get the people to misunderstand that. They dealing with something that has to do with communications and making an allegation that if I'm in the tree business, it's very lucrative. That's what's being said, and that's no different than what was said when we rode around. So he's consistent, and I'm always suspicious of people in the tree business that it might be somewhat lucrative with them big trees. So that's a unique Point of information, gift. Mr. Chair. I just want to point out, for Betty's words, the two companies that they contracted with outside of not going through the conservation district were Great Lakes and J&M. Those are two companies that the conservation district contracts with. So once again, these people never had a bid through the conservation district, never had a bid through the city, and we paid them $40,000 according to Betty. So let because me wrap up. $40,000, what we did is we sent an email or Derek sent a request either by phone or by email, I'm not sure which one, and they gave us a list of um, the sizes of the tree and what it would cost. So we could do a quick emergency something because we needed something in place because I had trees falling right. everywhere. So let me wrap up by saying so this. Believe me, people think I'm highly suspicious. So when you got people looking at highly suspicious tree companies, I'm going to pay attention because we are the investigative arm. But I'm not going to throw them tree companies under the bus because I don't want nobody throwing me under the bus. So we just got some work to do. And that's why I want to read the memorandum because we can do addendums to the memorandum. But I know attorney will agree with me. Just because a resident signed off liability 
that don't mean I'm signing off if I go down the street and a branch fall on my car. I had a branch fall on somebody had to go to early hospital last week. Come to find out it wasn't in between the sidewalk and the street. It was on somebody's property and so now they, you know, dealing with that. So Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the continued dialogue. I look forward to the tweaking of the memorandum. And even though y'all got some of the biggest, most valuable trees in y'all area that I'm sensitive to, I want to make the record. Y'all ain't saying nothing no different than what me, Ms. Poplar, and Mr. Nelson is saying. It's just that it's a way to do it. And I look forward to proving that it could be done. Y'all have been the best volunteer tree experts I've met in the city so far. Thank you. Okay, 170466 has been moved and supported to send the special affairs. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And I would just like to point out that there's been a lot of discussion about this, but today is the first day that the resolution has been presented to the city council. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our next resolution is 170467. Mr. Chair. Councilman Nelson. Move to council. Support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? All in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It is so ordered. 170468. Mr. Chair. Councilman Nelson. Moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Discussion? All in favor of sending it to Council 75 saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It is so ordered. Mr. Chair. The, uh, uh, the very first one. I thought you walked out of the room. Right? I don't want to get ahead of this. The very first one was sent to the special. 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 Thank you. Um, 170469, Councilman Mays. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, I don't want to make a motion on this, but I'm looking at some of the language talking about $79,000. This is supplemental funding. And I heard that $79,000. $79 million. $79 million for the first time in the KWA board meeting. And I know we had bonded originally for $220 million. And when you add $79 million and $220 million, that takes you to a total of $299 million. Now there are some contracts out there that says if the KWA it gets to 300 million, some agreements is void. And so believe me, I'm starting to dot all my I's and cross my T's because you remember it was a final connection of a $3.9 million parallel pipe. But now it's been a construction of um, a, maybe a well, the $14 million parallel pipe. And I understand it wasn't part of the bonding, but I want to see if I can look at that language again, Ms. Wheeler, because I want to see if that language says construction costs, bonding costs, or project costs. But if it hits over $300 million, some agreements are off. Now, the reason I raised that issue because 299 million plus another 12 or 14 puts me over 300 million. So I'm I'm not making. Well, I move this to special affairs, and if I if it go to special affairs, by the time it get to special affairs, I'm hoping that somebody can point out that language to me. Of, 300 million because I read it. I'm going to look for it, but I want the legal department to look at it because in order to complete a pipeline, you got to connect to something. And so I ain't a lawyer and I ain't going to try to be on this case. I don't even try to do it on all my cases, but what I want to look at on this one is the completion of a pipeline, in my opinion, might include the final hookup. 
I don't care who financed it. I don't care if it's financed with $299 million in bonding or $14 million that the state pays seven and the county pays seven. Two ninety nine plus fourteen puts me over three hundred million. And so I want the city attorney's office to do one thing for me. That language of over three hundred million, I want it before me if I can by special affairs. And then once you find that language, I wanna see if I can read it to see do it specifically say bonding. 300 million. So I would move it to special affairs um, unless somebody disagree. I can find it out on the floor. No, the, only, the only thing I'm going to suggest is earlier, Ms. Wheeler said she wasn't going to be here Monday. I'm going to have her try to answer your questions. So today. let me pull but the motion still, back and we, just wait to see what somebody do after we talk. Okay. Okay. I That's pull the why I'm yeah, I pull the motion back till we see where we are. I did want to give you a little bit of an overview of this resolution because it is a very important resolution and it is the resolution approving the first supplement to the KWA finance contract. And the resolution considers the following things. The execution of the supplement to the KWA contract that was from August 1st of 13. The issuance of the KWA bonds in an amount not to exceed um, $79 million. And the points from the original financing contract is this, is that the KWA is authorized to issue up to $300 million, um, million in, um, of bonds. Um, and the city, it pledges its full faith and credit um, um, to, to levy an ad valorem tax uh, property on, on property within the city to pay and, and use this money um, from those who are paying for the water supply to pay its obligation under the finance, under the finance contract. <laughs> thank you. So, um, thank you. Um, currently, the city, the, it's currently, the KWA has issued a um, series of bonds which total $294,870,000. So that um, also takes into consideration the KWA 2016 bonds that mature May 1st of 2018. That's the 74 million um, 370,000. And the KWA can issue an additional $79 million to refund the KWA 2016 bonds um, and to finance an additional $4 million for KWA project costs. So that's where that's coming in. So this adoption of this resolution is to prove the issuance of the terms for the refunding of the bonds. And also, um, it doesn't matter, just so you know, I just want you to know kind of the impact of this overall because we know we have our negotiations and things going on with regard to uh, GLWA. Whether or not we enter into a long-term contract or some alternative, we still have an obligation to do this. So this takes into consideration whether we do that or not, okay? If we do enter into, you know, as one um, option to do the long term, it affords for some refund, some credits back to the city. But if not, then we still have to do that, and which we would take up the credits, the credits for the debt service bonds at that point in time when we have another agreement or if we do... Um, the GLWA agreement at all. So um, it does provide for um, credits, credits against the amount owed um, by the city um, under the any type of GLWA agreement. But at minimum, like I said, if we do this, we're gonna, we should end up getting a proportionate share of our debt services bond. The thing about it is that we have to have something in place and we have to have either participate in the refunding or pay for the bonds ourselves. So um, that in and of itself would be a major feat for the city to do because then we have to come up with um, access to a financial market to be able to get 75, you know, $79 million, and which, which of course, yeah, we all know that we can't. And just so you know, the amount that the city is responsible for, which would have to come from the general fund, which we're not in a position to do, is 34.2% 
of the amount, which is $25,434,540. So, um, like I said, this is all inconsistent with um, the time frame that the bonds are maturing, which is March of 2018. So these are things that we need to um, get in place. So it's either refinancing those prior to the maturity or we pay at the maturity date next year, March 18, 2018. And we all know here we don't have the money to do that. So that's kind of the importance of getting um, that completed and getting that supplement um, done just to give you an overview. All right, Councilman Mays, and then I, I kind of interrupted you to let her answer. Do you want to send it special affairs still, or do you want to just move it to council? Yeah, because even though I heard the... Yeah, but I didn't hear where you wanted to go. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to kind of leave it, but I kind of wanted to go to special affairs uh, for Monday, because in the interim, I heard the verbal communication, but I want to see that exact language that refers to the 300 million um, attorney wheeler because I've read and I want to reread it to see what it says literally about over 300 million and I know my questions in the KWA board meeting um, when it was explained to us 74 million and then it was another five million. I asked a question in two parts specifically. It wasn't volunteer. I said the seventy-four million and two twenty million add up to two hundred and ninety-four million. They said yes. When they answered yes to that, then I said, What about that other five million? And they said gets up to two hundred and ninety-nine million. Whenever I get to 299 million, and it's and and 300 million is the magic mark. I ain't asking for no forensic audit. I'm taking everybody on what they think. But I'm gonna scrutinize that with a magnifying glass, because if you find any little extra money there, it's some agreements that can been broke. So. I want it to special affairs, and I move it to special affairs, asking that that written agreement about that not exceed 300 million. I want to review it again. If that language can be put in my mailbox, or well, I'll scrutinize my paperwork, but I read it. That's what prompted me to ask the question, and then I've got confirmation on the arithmetic. And so I wanted that special affairs. And um, by then, I'll be able to see what I'm looking at. Can, can I make a suggestion or just, just, just a conversation between you and I? We're going to have a lot of discussion in special affairs. If we are able to get you the information and just go ahead and send this to council and then deal with it on the council floor to try to... To try to come back on our special I'll affairs. I'll pull the motion back from uh, special affairs. Uh, I have uh, no problem okay. uh, moving it straight to council. But if I ain't got the information, we'll deal with it on the floor. I'm not going to support it because we voted on this in the KWA and I'm seeing it here. So that means we got to vote on it. Two. I do it in two places. Right. I didn't know it would show up here. And so I, it's given me a chance to dot some I's and cross some T's. So I'm going to recognize your motion to send it to council. Send it to council. Make sure that um, Councilman Mays gets the information that he's requested. And is there support? Support. Is there further discussion? Yeah. Councilman Mays? Mr. Chairman, through you to Ms. Wheeler, do you know what I'm looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for the, uh, the 2016 um, bond contract. It's going to be some language in the contract about exceeding 300 million and what the ramifications is if you do. And then the second um, I see that, then that's going to tell me whether I interpret the final connection as part of the KWA and whether it's relevant. Because you can't build a pipeline with an estimated $300 million or less cost, and then there
next night, you know, at the end, you ain't fully connected. So I, I, once I see the language, I'll decide if I, what it says about binding or total construction. Yes, Vicky. Yes, I just want to make sure with what you were saying, um, Attorney Wheeler, is there a certain uh, deadline when this resolution needs to be uh, approved? Or I noticed you mentioned a March 2018 date. I put May 1st of 2018 is when the bonds will mature. And what they're doing is, is a refunding. So it's really... Like I said, my limited knowledge on this, and we actually have a bond council that does this all the time, but this is reissuing new debt and basically getting a lower lower coupon rate. So this is something that you're, you're trying to uh, re reduce. I mean, it's not the same, but I kind of think about it like refinancing a house. You're getting a lower, you're getting a lower amount. So that's a very uh, basic way of of saying it, but what was your, I'm sorry, your question? Okay, so when does that. this need to be taken care of? By um, really, probably, I mean, we, yeah, we need to get it there this month, I mean, because here's, it takes longer than it looks, okay, to do all these things and, and stay on a schedule. There are certain things that have to be presented to banks, there's certain things that, the story that has to be told um, to those who are, are supporting this so and so to get certain ratings and things with regard to to the bonds so this is not just a simple you know we, we need it but preferably we'd like to have everything in place by the end of September okay and what was in reference when you mentioned to, uh, March 2018 no it's May Oh, okay, because I do see May, but I thought you said March a couple times. If I did, I was mistaken, but, oh, okay. but the, the, the bonds mature May 1st, yeah. 2018, so to keep on track, we either have to say, you know, make up our mind that we're not going to participate and pay it ourselves, which we can't do, or we have to participate in this, which, well, you know, years ago, you, you already... Agreed to to do. Okay, I, I just so, wanted to get some clarity. Yeah, okay. and, and like I said, the the amount will not go over the three hundred thousand threshold, um, and as described in the resolution. I mean, this is um, like I said, we have a KWA um, two thousand sixteen bonds maturing May first, two thousand eighteen, which is the seventy four million uh, three seventy we share. Um, uh, 34, 30, I mean, 34.2% of that, of that debt. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, one follow-up question through you to Ms. Wheeler, and I've struggled with this. If somebody missed a million dollars, and if it exceeds 300 million, and those agreements that I've read about is broken, what does that mean? Do we know? Do our seats on the board disappear? Who then owns the KWA? Are we out of it? I mean, do For we going know? over the three hundred million? Yes. I don't. I don't know what the impact of that has. I just know that there's certain laws that we have to stay consistent with, and certain debt that the municipality can take on things like that. So all, we all have to stay within a certain amount. I mean, I don't know specifically what that means for the KWA, but the agreement was. Is it? Um, but it means we wouldn't be liable for the bond. There's some language that says if it exceeds the 300 million, some agreement is broken. Maybe between now and Monday, you can tell. Me. Well, I, I can tell you again, the authorization is up to 300,000, uh, 300 million of bonds. It's no more. So, like I said, I don't. I don't think anybody plans on doing anything otherwise because this is what the agreement is for. I mean, there have to be a whole other agreement and, and the boards that would have to meet to do a separate approval for that. And that's not the plan, and that's not what's described um, within the um, refunding of the bonds. And, and I know we had that bond attorney here. Right. And if she was here, I would ask her, 
Are these interest rates and bonding and everything locked in stone? Because when you get that close, I don't know what it means. So yes. that's why I need her or somebody with that expertise. Because when I vote on this, and remember, I'm just a suspicious guy, I want to see what that language says. And then I need to ask some questions. Well, Other than that, she's you know, always, let me just say this. I'd be glad to have her or you, I have her give you a call. That would be fine. Because, like I said, she's always available for, for what we need. But this is one thing in which, like I said, we have to have, have that. I would like to talk to her prior to Monday to get a better understanding. I'll ask her to give you a call. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's been moved and supported to send to the city council. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, it is so ordered. Uh, any add items? Add items today? No, sir. Okay, we're to discussion items. It's uh, almost 7 o'clock. Um, somebody make a motion to postpone discussion items uh, other than those that need to be separated and Mr. Chair. dealt with this evening. I would appreciate it. Councilman <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I would move that the finance committee uh, discussion item on this Wednesday, September 6th um, agenda be postponed to the next finance committee meeting. Support. It's been moved, Mr. Porter. Are there any separations? Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman. I would like to have a second to look and see if there's a separation. Um, I had seen one earlier, and um, as I go through it, it would be 170425. I would like to separate 170425. On page 8, I believe? It would be on page 8, yes. Okay. Are there any other separations? Yeah. Um, Jackie? A6. 170056 and 170057. I would like to drop those until um, after November 8th, I believe. I recognize one seven one seven zero zero five six and five seven be, be dropped. Um, they're ordered without uh, no objections. Any other separation? I'm looking. Okay, that's it. All in favor of postponing discussion items signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? It is ordered. Uh, Councilman Mays one seven zero four two five. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, 170425 is a discussion item requested by me to discuss the $25 million is labeled as undiscretionary dollars that has been set aside in the state's budget, and the state budget takes effect October the 1st. So we in September. Last I heard, the Senate and the House had approved the $25 million in the state budget headed this way, and it talks about the water emergency. It would behoove me not to discuss it before it get here or before somebody spends $25 million. What is my wish list? One. I got a call or talked to somebody in your ward today, Mr. Winfrey, about a three or four thousand dollar water bill from a meter where they had estimated. Mr. Nelson, I think you agreed when I talked about the one for ten million, I mean ten thousand in my ward, you had some. I got one in my ward for three thousand and one thousand. See, Miss Brown. They like to sit at this table and they say they ain't political. If you take this seat, if I take this seat, don't believe them. Everybody in here is political. So they wouldn't be in no political office. I'm political. And political.
politically mean I'm supposed to work for people inside government. And so 25 million, I done said it repeatedly to the administration, and I hope they're here. I would set aside 300 to 500,000 out of that 25 million to wipe out these meter facts. And the reason I'd wipe them out because we was under emergency manager, we didn't have personnel, we didn't change meters, we are somewhat, in my opinion, at fault. Mm -hmm. Don't send Councilman Mays no bill for $10,000. Don't send me one for $3,000. And I understand it's a little E and people should know it was estimated. People thought they was paying their bill. What is three, four, five hundred thousand or even a million out of 25 million to set aside to help people who you work for? So I'm suggesting that loud and clear. And I done had Ms. Fisher on um, Cranwood file an appeal, her and Greg now, because when you file a written appeal and try to argue about it, as Ms. Wheeler knows, you shouldn't be getting cut off when these surprises come, but then you could get into the appeal and lose if we ain't pushed for money or policy. We did, with the help of your office, Ms. Wheeler, we've now changed the law where you can't go back in most cases past six months. We passed the law. I helped write a new law. Ain't that a blessing? And I helped write a new law where you got discretion and you don't have to put liens on people's property. Because we change the word from shall to may. I believe the whole thing should be repealed. We are the lawmakers. So we are the budget people. If that $25 million got here and sat there unspent the next budget year, we could definitely put it where we want. So we ain't just the lawmakers, we the budget people. What would I do with the other 24 million, Mr. Nelson? And Mr. Chairman, then I'm gonna wrap this up. This ain't my total thing, because people want me not to talk a lot. I ran to be the voice of the first war, and I sure been one. Amen. So, see, she didn't, Mr. Chairman, she can't be saying amen. This ain't true, but I know what she was doing. But now check this out. The other 24 million, this is what I would look at, and I'm going to throw it out there. Everybody who caught up on their bill, been paying good, the highest water rates in the country. One, I'm going to lower water rates every 10%. Well, the Sabuda was right. He said, we lose $3 million in revenue. They gave us 65% credit. Lowering 60%, that's 18 million on the wilder side. Some people say, give me the check. I think people had credits from April 14th to April 2016. From April 2016 to now, they've been paying for bad water they can't use, and they're trying to act like we're slipping out the credit. So guess what I give you? a bad water refund check. How much would it be, Mr. Nelson? 300, 500 people like getting checks. So I'm looking at stuff like that, but I'm just a counselor. I'm not going to be able to implement lower water rates. I'm not going to be able to implement bad paid for water refund checks. But I sure would do it. Remember, I'm a politician. I work for the people. My job is to listen to what the people want. Remember, who was it, the OJs? You got to get the people, get the people what they want. And so some things is fair. Water crisis, 24 million unspent. You got 80 million spent waiting on a, waiting on a decision unspent. This 25 million, we need to talk about it in the month of September. So I don't initiate a dialogue. Mr. Chairman, I'm not asking that it be took off the agenda. Because we got another meeting in September. Yeah, we got three more meetings. Three and more another meetings. in October. And I'm putting it out there. 
25 million. Miss Brown, you hear about it? We gonna show, talk about it in the first ward. You got any idea? We'll make it happen. Don't talk about it too loud, because if your idea be better than mine, I could be in the problem. So it's 25 million. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to recognize you for the next committee meeting. Actually, since these are just uh, discussion items and we've gone on and I don't think there's anything that's too pressing at the moment. Um, I would like to postpone this for two weeks, the entire agenda. There's nothing but discussion items. Legislative. Legislative. Okay. No, we're in legislative. Move to uh, uh, postpone all discussion items and legislative. Support. Move and supported. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Point, point of order. Move and support it. And what come after that? So the motion that was moved, have some discussion the motion to that was moved and supported was to postpone in legislative for two weeks. I would interject with just a tad bit of discussion. Legislative is the lawmaking body. If we don't make law this week, I ain't going to object to postponement, but this should be a busy committee. So no, I'll vote in favor of the postponement and discussion um, because it's the right thing to do. But I couldn't let it get by without a real dialogue. Of course you could. Well, I mean, could have. All right. Thank you. Legislative is adjourned. Mr. One Friend? Grant. Thank you, Mr. Committee, we all have. Uh, we only have discussion items as well. So I guess I would refer to Councilman Ladies and Councilwoman Fields to see what is their pleasure and stuff. Well, maybe they got it wrong. Mr. Chairman, Councilman, I would only make a quick little comment on one seven zero three nine five. Before I do that, I would move that the discussion items on the <coughs> branch committee September 6th agenda be uh, postponed to the next branch committee meeting, but I will have a separation, but I, I would make that most. Supported? It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I would like to separate 170395. Any others? Any other separation? Hearing none. All in favor of postponing all of the discussion items with the exception of 170395, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Councilor Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the reason I separated Discussion item 10395 that deal with grants for police personnel. Mr. President, there's been some dialogue between Ms. Brown and Ms. Hubble at the Mock Foundation. You know, they want to build a $35 million or wants to build a $35 million hotel downtown. And I'm like, we used to have one of the nationwide community policing programs or whatever, so some light bulb came on in my head and said, let's initiate some dialogue.
And you know, and everybody in the room knows, sometimes you can wait three, four hours for a police. Sometime the next morning. We need to start some dialogue to try to put more police and police cars on the street. Because state police will not respond to 911 calls. So I'll wait and we get closer to entering into some dialogue. Maybe the 25 million, Mr. President, should be used 3, 4 million to put 20 police on the street, call them wider emergency police. I don't know, but I look forward to the discussion of putting more police on the street, Ms. Poplar. And so I would um, ask that this be further postponed until somebody come in and talk with us. But every meeting I'm going to talk about police on the street. Is that all right with you, Mr. Chairman? It's all right. Thank you. All right. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn the so move. Discussion. Uh, motion to adjourn. This committee is adjourned. Mr. President. Mr. President, Ms. Galloway is gone. Yes. You want me to tell this? I got it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, Ms. Uh, I am going to put the same motion in on the postman for two weeks, okay. but you have some yes. drop offs. Yes, Give me the one that you choose to drop. Ms. Okay, um, we can just permanently drop 170128. 128. Permanently okay. drop 170129. Okay. And I thought I saw the fire chief out there. Is he still there? Hey, 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 hey. Um, I've had a referral, um, and I wanted to know if, if it's possible that you can follow up on this referral. I'm going to leave it on there. The question was, how much uh, does the city have in its fire escrow uh, insurance, uh, insurance account? And which houses have fire insurance in escrow, and how does that process work so we can get these houses? We don't have any of that. What it is, the city holds the money, the fire department does. Because when a house burns down and people have insurance that are torn down, and some kind of a city holds that money. And if the person tears his house down, then so they'll get the money. So you don't, but, but I don't have any of that. You don't have, so I don't no have access to no, that knowledge no, or no, no information. No, no, no. Right. Right. So we sent that to Don Steele. You sent it to who? Don Steele in finance. Well, leave, leave that on. Leave it on. Because I still haven't gotten any information. That's what that would be. I sent it on there, but that's what that would be. We just, like when they have insurance, we'll just inspect the whoever finance holds the money. And I guess once the house, if they don't tear it down, then they'll use the money to tear it down. But if the owner tears it down, then they can use the money to tear it down. And the reason why I can't find out is because I'm not sure if you're talking about the fire insurance or the fire insurance. The reason why I keep questioning this is because in Detroit, they found out that they had all this money in escrow, and that helped take some of the houses down from some of the blight. And we, they probably could be that situation here in the city. If I could add on to your referral, I think we also need to send that to Jesse Buchanan and Susan Wilcox. Okay. Just get that money in the fire escrow. Yeah, yeah but, and no tell them how much money is in there. Any more bright items you wish to drive? But Jesse knows how it functions so what happens. So he should be able to give you the, you should be able to refer Well, I sure would like to you know. Any more that you wish to drop? No, I have a referral. Though, okay. Before you close it up. Okay. To answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Miss Drop, uh, 170445 on page 5. Okay. Okay. All those drops. Mr. May, you have separation? Yeah, and I promise I won't be long on them. Okay. One of them I want to separate is um, 160443. That's the senior centers. We got an inspection there. We got to talk about practice and normal. And so I want to separate 160443. Okay. And then um, I would separate also. Um, you know, this is going to be quick.
Our bets are two minutes. I'm separating one seven zero one nine four. One nine four? Yeah. What page is that? On page four. four. And then I want to separate one seven zero four three zero, Betty, because I went on Flint Park Street and I seen some black stuff through in the hole. I make that quick, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I want to separate one seven zero four three zero, and then finally, and I make this quick because I didn't talk about. It. I'll separate one seven zero four four three. I promise to be quick. All right. Did I get did I get support on the um, support part? Okay. So, um, man, we will go with the Mr. Lane's your first separation. So we voted to, to postpone, postpone the rest of the You got support. Yep. So we just voted all in favor. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. I was just going to so order it. Oh, but well you got that power. Yeah, but no, I we both so your first separation. All right. Uh-huh. Um, Mr. Chairman. Give us the page number two. I've separated page number four, one seven zero one nine four. Okay. I happen to look at council meeting on channel seventeen mm -hmm. and I hope that they've seen it at six eighteen West Alma. If that pipe is still leaking water and we still debate whether we should fix that or not. My position is clear. Let's fix that. And any of them like it. Maybe it should be done up to 25 million. Okay, so I would ask that they stay on the agenda and be postponed for two weeks. All right. Um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. 170430. What page? Uh, page four. Okay. The reason I brought that up about the right of way restoration, I wanted to follow up when I seen it. I drove down Flint Park. I think Miss Popley, you and I are the first and second ward for however long we have it. We share Flint Park. One end is you, the other end is first ward. I seen black stuff dipped around the holes. But the square is still there with rocks there. I'm like, is that the restoration or that's just some no. temporary? Can that's Mr. A, Chairman, through you, can she yes. tell me what I'm seeing? That's a temporary repair. What we found out, um, when the contract was bid out, they decided that all streets would have gravel for them. Major streets have heavy traffic. They drive through, they push the gravel out. So what the contractor did for us is put asphalt at both ends of it so it makes it a smooth transition. They can go in the hole, out the hole, without tearing up the track until the contract is approved for Zito to do restoration services. And we voted on Zito. Now it's got to go before the RTAP. Right. So I still didn't drive on. I drove around. So I can now explain to people that ain't the restoration. Right. It's going to be smooth, black, hot patch, whatever. Okay, Mr. Chairman, yes, until sir? I see that happen, I would ask that that stay an agenda item to keep my mind fresh for two weeks, so I postpone two weeks and wait to see what happens. Next one, Mr. Davis. The High Water Bill Assistance Program. <coughs> I separated it. It's supplemental ops. I'm going to ask that we have somebody at the next governmental ops. I want to see if maybe the city administrator or the mayor can come and discuss this. I'm saying the city administrator or the mayor because $10,000 bills, $3,000 bills, dating back. I mean, I ain't too proud to talk in purpose. And I really want to talk about this rather than let it stay. So I'm going to ask for somebody from the administration, the city administrator, let him know that I'm asking for some communication for mayor, whoever. Is he here? Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? Oh, he's out there? Yeah. Because I'm really serious about this, man. Can you imagine Miss Fisher calling me with one of these on Cranwell? Mr. Jones, this is a, a agenda item that I have put on here, 170443.
it's a discussion item, and it's really sincere about putting some money in a pot, whether it's October 1st after that state budget of $25 million come in. Have we heard whether or not that money been spent or earmarked for something, do you know? I have not heard that. But you know the $25 million I'm referring to? Not precisely. Let me explain. Okay. Jim Ananick explained to me, and I think I talked to Neely once too, that it's $25 million been had allocated for the city of Flint out of the state's upcoming budget year. Okay. And um, have you been familiar, you familiar with that? I have heard that the budget has been adopted, and so we need to spend more time talking about that $25 million and how it can be allocated. And I'm saying if don't nobody want to allocate it or spend it, i got a lot of ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so what one of them is, I want to see if we can put a minimum of $300,000, $500,000 and kind of work with some of these. Um, water bills that had been estimated back for three years because you know we changed the law. Angela's office and I and the council work and you can now if it's and I, I don't like that word on it Angela I'm going to try to amend it if it's the city's fault then you can't go back past six months and I don't know who going to define that you know when we had emergency managers and you know people couldn't get water meters because the person there, it was before me and you, we wasn't here. I might have been here in 2 <laughs> you know, whatever. But however, whoever part it was, I just want to fix it. You know, Miss Johnson on, what was that, Leslie and all of them. So I want to see if we can have some serious dialogue. And that's why I ask you to come in rather than put it off two weeks because as we go into the state's fiscal year, of October 1st, I don't want that money to get away. Right. I've even suggested lower water rates on the water side of Flint credit with that money, rebate, refund checks, something to do for the people, because people are saying to me, all oh, this money coming in, we ain't benefiting from it. That's right. I'm a politician. You got, you got to let the people touch something. And so that's where we at. So that's why I call you in. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, as I know that any day of the week, I can call Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jones can communicate with the mayor. I talk to him myself. I just wanted to do this in a formal setting because I'm going to be shown up lobbying and politicking on that $25 million because I think it should touch the great people of the city of Flint. Right. Okay. okay. All right. So Thank that's you, what I'm talking Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, I would ask that 170443 be postponed and kept on the agenda for another two weeks. Was it one more? No. Yeah. Mr. President. It was one about the senior center. Yeah, you said one about the senior What page? So I skipped it. Could I circle back? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Okay, that one would be 160443. Now, if I misspeak, Mr. Chairman, indulge me because she might be short of saying it than me. That would be board member Norm. But this is the situation. An inspection has come up. An annual inspection for a building that we own. Okay. I talked to Mike Ryder. He read it, inspected, and it might get solved because I guess Mr. Buchanan, his supervisor, was maybe off Friday. I don't know if he was off. We was all off Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, and the day Wednesday. The senior millage people sent them a letter and say, if you don't get this annual required inspection, it might cost you. 113000 in funding to the senior. Is Mr. Jones still here? Oh, there he is. He's familiar with it, too. So I called Mr. Jones, and he left his office and walked down to inspection and put Mr. Mike right on the phone. When I came to the JaVale McGee thing with the NBA trophy, I seen Mike right in the lot. 
He said he ready to inspect it. They want to know who's going to pay for it. I said, Hasselbrink and Norman them going to pay for $200 for the inspection. Mr. Chairman, through you to Norma, did I misspeak myself? Yes, but something happened today. May she tell me? If she wishes to. Okay. Uh, as we were told as of last week, that everything was set by Mr. Ryder. Well, we got a call, we got an email from Mr. Buchanan today. And he asked a question of uh, who was going to pay for it. Uh, and why was there a third party? Why was there a third party involved? And he asked another question. So I had my director email him back. Oh, and Sylvester Jones sent an email as she was sending hers to say, answer Buchanan's questions. So, Point of information. Who was he referring to as I didn't say it in that way. I no, I don't mean it negative. I don't mean it. Okay. All right. I don't mean it negative. I don't mean it. Okay, all right. So, uh, she wrote back that we had had an outside inspector last year, mm -hmm. and the city was upset about it because the Monday Township guy did it. Monday Township inspector. inspector. Then, um, so I told her to tell him the city was upset. So that's why we asked the city to do an inspection right. this year. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we're waiting on to find out if the city is going to do the inspection, because we had such a problem last year with the inspection, and we know that we have to pay for the inspection. So that's where the dilemma is now. But Mr. Ryder told us, just like you said, he's ready to do the inspection. But so now it's left up to from his boss, Jesse. So Jesse probably are okay, but I want to call that to attention because I always leave this on. Because if this council, anybody in the city, turned around and Hasselbrink had lost a hundred and thirteen thousand because of a delayed inspection, I couldn't live with myself. So I called Commissioner Nolan and say, talk to the senior people and tell them, even though they sent that letter by the deadline for Thursday, don't let that money be jeopardized. Now, I don't know who can or who can't, but I've done my job, and I've put it out here. So hopefully the city will get the inspection done, and all parties will help, you know, fill out the forms and pay for what's necessary. But I know from me talking to Mr. Mike Ryder, we got a inspector ready to do it. It's just a general inspection of our building. And so all I can do is ask and inquire. I can't order folks according to the charter, but I can show, put it out here to try to facilitate a good thing. Okay. So you're saying that Mike Ryder is ready? You covered your basis with the county commissioner that we won't be uh, penalized for this deadline. Uh, did you get a response from him? Oh, yeah. He said he would talk yeah. to Lynn. Now, okay. I'm he in a position as I mean. Yeah. I'm just a little counselor, and we talk to people. He might know what he's saying, and I believe him. So I think we've covered all bases, and who knows, the inspection might be done tomorrow and we meet the deadline of Thursday. So all we're doing is talking, I promise them, if I see Mr. Buchanan and anybody here, I would bring it up. So I did what I had, and I can be quiet, and that's my last agenda item, if you will see why she's standing up. Uh, oh, I, now, my question is, uh, if, if it's all right with, with the council, yeah. to find out if we can meet our deadline of our inspection, which okay. our deadline is tomorrow. If not, what is the earliest so we'll be able to relay that message back to the county? And, and the only thing I can say yeah. to the yeah. chair to Mrs. Norman, we did have, uh, as, as Councilman May said, we walked over, I walked over to BSI, we talked with Mike Ryder, and Mike Ryder was all set up to complete that inspection. So now that Jesse has his answer, it's my hope that he will allow him to go forward with that inspection because Mike Ryder 
has no problem doing it, he's willing to do it. So I'll follow up with Jesse to see if he can get that. Mr. Done. City Administrator, mm -hmm. who is Jesse Buchanan's boss? Yeah. Who is Jesse? Um, Suzanne Wilcox. Is who is Suzanne Wilcox's boss? Um, ultimately, we're trusting in you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get your point. Yes. Yes. All right. yes. So I'll keep that postponed for two weeks. So what is Mr. Chairman, this governmental office, correct? And you know how many governmental operation things go on in this city that I want to discuss, but you wouldn't be mad at me if I put a motion on the floor to adjourn. No, I I'm not going to do it. I have a referral. Oh, referral. Oh, 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 Thank you. Do you refer to Papa? I am. Okay, don't rush me. Y'all didn't rush yet. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Angela, I spoke with Raul today. <coughs> uh, why are we not prosecuting the people that he's given tickets to that have blight? The, the landlords, the absent landlords, and Raul is just about to have it beyond the ceiling because he's writing tickets and the city's not prosecuting. So it's who? So it's, I mean, I'm just trying to, you, you say that as if that's, that's accurate. I've been trying. I mean, doing what specifically? We have a, a district court. The, that prosecutes municipal civil He crime. said this that we're not we're not prosecuting. And that's why he's he's upset about the tickets that well, he's been writing. Well you, that's you, no you, that's that's that is not true. Okay. Um, if a municipal civil infraction is written, there is a process <laughs> that they go through the district court. It's not an option for us not to prosecute them. We don't get an option to say we're not doing our job. Okay, so if a, if a municipal civil infraction comes through, then <coughs> if it's a municipal civil infraction, it goes through um, the court. So, I mean, maybe I need to see more specifically what you're speaking of, and I can talk with you separately, but if it's... Well, a, he's writing blight tickets. A blight ticket goes through the uh, administrative hearing officer, and there's a process being set up for that. Now, that is, that is different. So, but he can still write the tickets, and we have an administrative hearing officer, Torsho Feaster. So, let me, can I make a recommendation, Council, on the topic? Yes, Mr. President. Maybe I, I would suggest that you would get with uh, Mr. Feaster right, and, 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 and Raul, and you guys meet, and just give him an example. Let him know something that, give him an example so Mr. Feaster can look into it. It may be in the process. And just has not gotten through the process yet. So if you, if, and I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying, suggesting if you get because he was, you know, we uh, uh, appointed him what this year, to, right? To do that. So check with him, and he he was going to meet with me, so he'll yep. gladly meet with you. Right. And there's two, like I said, there's municipal civil infractions that are already in process that go specifically through the 67th District Court, and then there's a separate administrative hearings bureau that has certain tickets. So. Like I said, I, I think a, a meeting would be good to have to, to go over it because, like I said, the assumption that we're, we're not doing anything, I don't think that's accurate. Right. Go ahead, yes, if I can ask, who gets any type of updates on what goes to uh, Mr. Feaster as to either addresses or type of action taken, data was turned in? Is there any type of records like I mean, that? I mean, I can't answer that question sitting right here. I mean, we have a whole blight department. So, like I said, you know, and this, you know, Mr. Feaster, is an administrative hearing officer, and he's a, um, like I said, although that came through our office, he's still a separate, you know, entity, so to speak, and you know, so he he serves in a specific position. So, like I said, we have a whole life department who handles tickets, processes tickets, and things like that. So, these questions need to be answered by the department that's doing it. Okay, okay. so who would you suggest would be the best? Um, well, it was Joel Arnold. So, I think he's been, has, has Andrew, a re Andrew, replacement. Andrew. Right, so maybe we can start there. Maybe Suzanne Wilcox, who's over, over things. So, but like I said, I think that 
you know, it would be good to get some information and we can work from that. Could I make a referral that we have someone to explain what the process is now that we do have a blight officer? So, um, to what? Mr. Okay. okay. Um, Raul said he's working by himself. No, he ain't working by himself. He got a person. We, got, we put a person in there. I thought we'd put a person well, in there. He ain't working by himself. Oh, let me settle down. He is not working by himself. Well, I'm just going off on what he told Where me. Where is the person at? That he's by himself. Okay. But I mean, he's physically by himself? I mean, there's a whole department that's a neighborhood right, safety physically. Up. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> I Out think, there. like I said, I think you probably need to get more information, and I'm just, I, I would, Well, a person know if they by themselves or not. Well, yeah, I do, too. <laughs> but yeah. what, this is what, what I'm, I'm saying, saying is this I'm is sorry. that you oh, have neighborhood yours. safety officers oh, who are assigned throughout the city. And so, what do they do? Well, do again, they clean up? Well, again, right here having this debate See, is not going to solve clean anything. Up. That's what we talking about. Right here having this debate is not going to solve anything. So what I'm saying well, we is, we need people that's cleaning up, not with, just going out there. Well, of course, the of course. But what I'm saying is this: let's get some accurate information from those who do the job on the ground every day. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. Well, if they're not clean up or clean up, they ain't doing nothing on the ground. <laughs> you know, they ain't doing something on the ground. 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 <laughs> that's the problem. The stuff not coming off the ground. Everybody see what's on the ground. But when you pick it up off the ground, then you can see something being done. Mr. And that's where it's probably. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, real quick. And if ain't nobody else got nothing, when I finish, I'll make that motion. To the, okay, so, but if somebody got something, I won't move to adjourn. But this is what I want on a discussion <laughs> item on next government while. If I can get this discussion item, I want to look at the charter as it relates to the council rules. Light bulb came in my head. I think you're going to find language in the charter that says if two or more council people meet, then I keep hearing about attorney general opinion. So through this to you, um, Mr. Chairman, through you to the city attorney, I'm looking at the charter language, which I took over of office to live up to. If two or more meet, it's a public meeting, a public notice. That rule that I'm going to blame you and Miss Fields and them put in there for that ad hoc committee three, if it's three or more public notice and meetings, and some stuff is confidential, I ain't talking about it, that I'm trying to use something to say that I want a discussion item on governmental options is a possible conflict between the council rules and the charter and law. And then if we have to, I'm going to suggest that we repeal some of them rules if we find out they conflict. They might not. So I want that on the, as a discussion item on the next Thank governmental you. option. And then the other thing is I'm getting very close um, of doing this. So I'm going to make a referral, if I may, through you to the city attorney. Mm -hmm. um, Madam Attorney, can you put in my mailbox any state law that talks about a pawn shop not taking in government or school <laughs> property? If you find a state law about a pawn shop Oh, not Lord. taking in governmental mm. or school property oh, and what right. the ramifications yes. is if they do. I want you to put that law in my mailbox. I've seen it, but I'm putting it on the agenda because I know my colleagues, particularly Mr. Kincaid, mm -hmm. you concerned with people following the law, ain't you? Yeah. And then finally, I would make a referral. Whether we go in executive session or Stick not, with a pork, I'm I got information <laughs> that I want to find out about this um, police investigation as far as people who were circulating and signing petitions. You cannot look into that in my Well, opinion. they'll tell me, but I'm making the referral. Okay. Okay. I want to find out. got a gag order, so they can't talk. Who got a gag order? That's well, what I'm thing. saying is I, I got information, and I'm it's knowing in the paper. that if the police some chief folks said there's a gag order, they can't talk about nothing. That's what they say now. I ain't been served with no gag order. So what I want to do is make a referral and put it on the discussion item in governmental ops to discuss 
that alleged violations by certain circulators and for um, people who may or may not have changed dates. I want that as a discussion item. And when we get there, if they tell me it's a gag or something I can't discuss, then so be it. And so on the next governmental office, I want that as a discussion yeah. item. Because we are an investigative branch, yeah. and I know what I know, and I'm going to talk about it. Okay. So I would move now. Let me do it, Mr. Means, because I have something. I need to refer Well, Mr. Mr. President, once you're done, you the chair, let me move the agenda. Okay. I'll hold my motion. Um, um, Janelle, I want to do a referral to... Um, Miss Wheeler, you, because we discussed, I'm just doing it properly. Okay. To you, the chief, and the deputy chief, and see where we are in the process of this club on Saginaw Street, of shutting it down. It does not have the proper license, so I want to know why is it still operating. I want it shut down. Not afraid, the citizens and the people that elected me, they're tired of it. We already had a tragic incident right in front of it, and so we need to shut it down. So I want to know where we're at with that. Okay? Do you have an address? Um, all I can tell you is a black and gold black club. Gold. All I can tell Black gold. Black gold. <laughs> black, gold. <laughs> black gold, whatever. All right? Is that motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Then move in support. To adjourn. We are here. This is the City of Flint's City Council meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions and underwritten in part by the Flint Pipe Fitters Union, looking for pipe fitters apprentices throughout Flint. With more information available by calling 810-720-5243 or online at local370.com. Join us at WFOV for rebroadcast and simulcast of City Council and other government meetings. 92.1 LP FM Flint.